thing that we have seen in so many places that their religious congregations are present, life becomes better, more joyful. People are more united and filled with hope. Blessed Pope John the 23rd, he talked about the marvelous strengths of the religious congregations and their capacity to unite the holy energies of the church. We think that this is the best way to define what we see happening every day in this house and through this house. We are grateful for that and it's a privilege for us to be part of this. Can there be a grace and hope emerging from the most holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, before Mary, our mother, and all here present, I, John Joseph Hannon, and Matthew Craig Larkin, I, John Justin Taylor, renew the three spiritual vows of chastity, obedience, and poverty. Strengthen, O Lord, the work which you have begun. Mary, loving mother, I am yours. Through the power of your intercession, keep me unto life everlasting. Recently, I had the privilege to see in the archives a book with all the names of those who have taken vows in the Society of Mary, starting with Father Colin, and your names listed among thousands of others. I can say that it was a great emotion for me. The sacred pages of this book. They are the names of humble and ordinary men who with generosity have allowed God to work in their life and so to become witnesses of his wisdom and his love. Some of them, as we know, have made a great and even heroic contribution to history. And we think that you are among these great merits. What is the mystery of a vocation? Any vocation or commitment, whether to marriage, or to priesthood, or to religious life, or to the single life. How is it that many promising and talented and very good people at some stage choose another path and it's the rest of us who celebrate the jubilees because that's what it is a sacred mystery the fact that we are followers of jesus that we believe him to be our lord and savior that we believe him to be risen and be with us in our work i think it's a wonderful privilege and to do that too in the spirit of mary so as we give thanks today i thank you I thank God uh, and I thank our blessed mother. Well, you could call it grace or you could call it good luck. But anyway, today we are celebrating the grace of God's fidelity to three Marists. As Christians, we all live the mystery of those most particular and maybe unique call of being great and humble at the same time. And we thank each one of you for the way you show us how to live this balance every day. I can't speak for other people, but I suspect that at some stage in our lives, all of us have known what Elijah experienced. That burst of energy and evidence of God's power at the beginning, and then the experiences of life, discouragement, struggles and weaknesses. And Elijah thought he had come to the end of his life. But God had other plans for him. His life was a gift for someone else. And it didn't end even when he went up to heaven in his fiery chariot. So what kept this man going? It wasn't the food that he tasted in the wilderness. It was something else. And here, I think, is the first clue to my question. What kept him going? It was desire. When God meets him in the wilderness and asks him what he's doing there, he replies, I'm filled with zeal and desire for my Lord. Desire. That's what keeps us all going in our time of commitment. Sometimes the desire burns fiercely. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the flame nearly goes out. But even a fragile desire is enough. For myself, sometimes when the fire, fire dies down, I can only desire to desire. But even the desire to desire, that too is enough. 
The psalmist knew all about this. We prayed with him just now. For you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. Thank you, Father John. Most of us have had the privilege to know you already when you made visits to the General House while you were still the provincial of Ireland and later of the new province of Europe. And we remember when you rejoiced together with the whole society when you were elected Supreme General almost four years ago. We are impressed by your dedication to the ministry that has been laid upon you. And every day we see your work in full of energy for the good of the society. And here I am today. I don't know how many years later, never thinking that I would be here in this community celebrating my golden jubilee in the midst of such exalted com company as Justin and Craig. But it is a real blessing. And what said, I was thinking this morning about it and I said, the things I'm most grateful for are the, the community life that I'm living in now, they also, those of you who work with us, that you're really truly married, and every one of you plays a significant role. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, Father Craig. When you are around in the house, we feel the corridors filling with joy and energy. We know you since many years as a good friend, and your faithful engagement in many fields of the society strikes us. Continuous research in the new ways to transmit the spirit of the society to others. We know you as a precious person, full of resources and wisdom for many in society and even the young people. In a dozen words, Jesus gives us the essential. He says, still happier are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Thank you, Father Justin. We find it a privilege that you have been part of the Montevideo community for the last year. And and that we have had the opportunity to know you better as a fine and humble man of great wisdom and culture, which you like so much to put in service of the society and of the world's church. Your peaceful and gentle presence in the house is of great value and an example for us. We have a group of three who are celebrating 50 years of religious profession, and we have a group of four who are celebrating 70 years of life. Now, there is some overlap in reality between those notionally distinct groups. Uh, Craig already mentioned that if you add up the, 100, the 50 years of that the three of us, Craig and John and myself, have already had as professed members of the Society of Mary, that adds up to 150 years. 150 years of Maris life together. And being a historian, of course, I went back in time 150 years ago in the Society of Mary. Well, that's 1863. Father Farber is Superior General. Father Colin is still alive and about to enter the most painful period of his life. The same operation on the 70 years by four is 280, and that takes you back to the year 1733, but we won't go there. The numbers themselves are very interesting because I added up 150, which is the sum of three times 50, and 280, which is the sum of 7 times, sorry, 4 times 70, and I got 430 people, 430 years. Now, 4, 3, 0. So we drop to 0, because 0 is nothing. We end up with 4, 3. Well, that makes 43, and which is the year of the birth of all four of us. Thank you, Father Tony. We remember well the beginning of January of 2007, when you arrived in the General House to take up the role of Secretary General, and later also the one of Superior of the House. Immediately, immediately you endeared us with your sympathy and your friendly way of relating with people. Many of us like learning from you and listening to your advice in all kinds of matters, which you always offer with kindness, generosity and wisdom. You also share with us your artistic talents, and we enjoy this not only in your care for this beautiful house and its daily life, but also in your care for the beauty you like to see in each person. Um, congratulations and our esteem and assurance of our continual uh, <coughs> love and prayers for John and Craig and Justin on their um, jubilee. And to, as we thank the Lord 
in the Eucharist for his faithfulness to them. Uh, I would also like to thank them for their faithfulness, for their fidelity. God says, go back by the same way to the moment when you put your foot on the path of God. That's the sure path. Follow it. It may lead you into the wilderness, but it will be the right path. And somehow I think that's what we are remembering today. We're remembering the faithfulness of God who keeps calling us to get up. We're celebrating the lives of men who have tried to keep the fires of desire stoked. And we're all listening to a God who calls each of us each day to go back by the same way, the way that God chose for us as our path. Can there be grace and hope emerging from the pain? Can there be a truth?